It's me, Raina Mo, and today our tutorial is going to be for the wreath, the third and the final in the series uh, that I've been doing for my fall decor. Um, and then the last part will be me get doing a um, reveal of all of the crafts that I have done, and that'll be a separate video. And then I'll start my wedding series. So. Making a wreath takes a long time, and I know that I do not want this video to be extremely long. So I've already started by taking my metal wreath and applying the pipe cleaners to it um, for the areas in which I want to place the mesh to help build the wreath. And basically, depending on the size of the wreath, that will determine how many pipe cleaners it is that you'll need. Um, I know 18 pipe cleaners is used for the bigger reefs that are like 24 inches. This one I've used 12. So there's a total of 12 pipe cleaners. So basically what you do is you start off by building your grid and I'm going to just bend the ones that are on the outer rim outward to kind of keep them out of the way so that the ones towards the inner rim will be the ones that I'll be focused on working with. Now you have to pick what ribbon, what mesh, what tool, whatever it is that you want to use as your background. And for this I've chosen a glitter mesh that I picked up actually at Michael's on clearance. 80% uh, off I believe it was. It was either 70 or 80% off. And this is the one that I'm going to start with. So basically all you do is you really need to measure, but for all intents and purposes, my measurements are going to be my short arms. So I'm going to see where my fingertips start to my elbow, and that's how I'm going to do my measurement. So for this, I'm going to start here at my very first Chanel stem and go ahead and just do one to two twists. You don't want to do too many and you definitely don't want to make them too terribly tight. So from here, I'm going to put my elbow down and I'm working backwards. This, this is the direction in which I want to work. So I'm going to put my elbow down and then where my fingertips actually come, that's where I'm going to start actually gathering or fan folding or pleat folding the ribbon in like a, an accordion, that's why I call it a fan fold, but like an accordion fold. And then connect where I've made my pinch to the next pipe cleaner. And we're going to do this for the entire length of the ribbon. So it's going to unfortunately be a lot of quiet time unless I learn how to edit this video and add some music and maybe speed it up. It's just a long process because it's tedious. If you have a ruler, that would be the best thing, but um, I have short arms. I'm just short natured anyway, but that's all right. One thing you also want to keep in mind, when I picked up this mesh, I thought, oh my God, that's such a great price and it's so pretty. I did not realize that the fallout of the glitter was going to be as much as it is. So that's another thing that you want to keep in mind. I want to be covered in glitter after this project, although I don't mind. But if someone happens to have like an allergy or very sensitive skin, that might be an issue. You just gather it up, and I'm not being all that careful about whether or not it's messy or not. And the reason being is because this is a nice heavy-duty ribbon that has wire, so when it's time to finish and fluff it up, it'll stand the way that I want it to. It'll fluff up the way that I want to, so I don't have to be too care careful. So here you see I'm coming to my last Chanel stem before I join where I started. And Chanel stem also being pipe cleaner. And so here is the original one that I started with right here. So I'm just going to do one more loop and then I'm going to show you how to go ahead and start it 
on the next row without having to cut your without having to cut your ribbon and start all over again. Okay, so from here, my next Chanel stem is here. This was my last. So I'm gonna take this and pull it really tight and then I'm gonna tie it down here. And it takes a little bit of pulling and tugging, but you'll be able to get it. Now, we're at the top, okay? So you see that? We're at the top. So now we can do the same procedure. And this is gonna be covered up by the different embellishments and what have you that you put on. Um, so don't worry about this, the little loop that you have here, okay? You may want to push everything that you've accomplished so far towards the center just to get it out of the way to make it a little bit more manageable. There's so many different sizes of tool, mesh, ribbon, whatever it is that you're wanting to use. Um, once you pick what you want and you learn how to work with it, it makes your whole life easier. Just pay attention to certain things because there are certain lengths and widths of ribbon. And I know for this particular size wreath, which I got the metal framework from the Dollar Tree. Everything came from the Dollar Tree, except for this orange mesh that I'm working with. This came from Michael's. And like I said, it was on clearance. I just got it this weekend. Today is Monday. I picked this up on Saturday. So by the time I post this, you guys may even be able to find it in your local Michael's. If you particularly like this, just keep in mind that the glitter does fall off. So there is fallout. Um, and I'm sure you can see my skin glistening from the the ribbon but I'm so glad that it's an orangey gold because I like looking golden <laughs> especially since we're in the winter time I don't mind the glitter so much okay we're getting close to the end and this is gonna be the last one now for the different types of ribbons, meshes that you use, you have to also pay attention to how thick or how thin it is and if a person will be able to see the metal framework um, underneath it. Some people may actually want to go over this framework one more time with the exact same ribbon to double it up. But with this particular ribbon, <clears throat> with this particular ribbon, if you doubled it, and maybe even tripled it, but for sure doubled it. I can see through this, but just barely. So it would hide the framework as well as whatever embellishments it is that you'd like to put on there. So from here, since I have stopped and I'm not gonna go back and do a double um, roll, what I'm gonna do is cut here, and then I'm gonna tuck the rest around and into the framework. And there's a smidge left. So I'm gonna tuck that right back here. I don't know if you can see that, but I hope you can. Okay, so I know this probably looks like a real mess, but it's not. From here, what I'm gonna do is Everything that's on the outside, I'm going to tuck that down, and I'm going to start working from the inside. For me, working from the inside outward makes the whole process easier. And now what I'm going to do is go ahead and start working on the ribbon. I've chosen this green ribbon that came from the Dollar Tree, as well as this leaf ribbon. So I'm going to open that up. And then I'm going to start working on this wreath, adding the ribbons. So what I want, I want the leaf pattern to be more prominent and on the top. So I'm going to place them side by side. And then from here, just like I did before, 
I'm going to place it right in to the Chanel stem and secure it. And then from there, I'm going to fluff out my ribbon just a little bit. And this helps me with my measurement. So I have my green ribbon. And it's going to be measured over the top of each loop. And then once I do that, I can secure it in the chenille stem. And you're just going to repeat that process over and over and over again. Open up your loop and feed it over the top. It's my boo bear here. She's so talented. Am I on tape? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she is. Hey, hi. Glitter all over the house again. Yes. Glitter. It's for good Glitter reason. is girly. That's what she said. Glitter is girly. Yes. I like this uh, YouTube thing, huh? I do. She's a beautiful woman. She is. Thank you, babe. She's got the best heart. I'll let you go back to work. Thank you. Impromptu. Okay. All right. And you just keep on working. And see, as you start working, you'll realize exactly what I was saying and what I meant when I said you want to push what is on the outside out and focus on what's on the inside. Because as you fluff up these loops, this wreath really grows tremendously. We're almost to the last loop in the middle. Now, once I finish with this loop, I'm not going to have that much ribbon left over for the second, the second side because the ribbon that I got from the Dollar Tree isn't the same length as the ribbon that I got from Michael's. Okay, so it's different. Look how pretty that's starting to look out. One might even say, you know what, Rena, you may not even need to put ribbon on the, the last row, but I'm going to because I like that consistency. So, of the ribbon that is left, I only have this little bit of ribbon left. So, what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to leave this attached, and I'm going to go ahead and connect it like I did the other one to the next ribbon to the front. And I'm going to push all of this towards the center to get it out of the way, to make it easier for working. Excuse me, y'all. I don't know why I'm sweating so much. But anyway, I'm going to pull this tight. Okay, so here. And now I'm doing the same thing on the front row. And this will be enough to get me through two loops, and then I'll open up the second. I'm going to go ahead and just cut off and be careful that you don't cut your mesh. Cut off this little bit of scrap of ribbon and open up my last two rows. Now what this tells me is I'll be able to finish the top two rows and I'll have some ribbon left over. So for that I'll probably make little tails, uh, but I won't be cutting them like dovetails. Um, if the ribbon's pretty enough when I cut it and it's finished, I won't have to cut it like dovetails. <laughs> and just remember how you set that up together and go back in that same tie pipe cleaner and twist it tight and open up your loop and start the process over and over again. Now, when I initially um, did this, this is my second wreath, the first wreath that I uh, made, it was actually, the framework was much larger. It came from Michael's because I ordered it way back because um, I was going to do a different DIY with it and it came a little bent and I didn't like it. And I tried to open it up some and it, it, it worked out okay, but not for what I wanted to um, it to be. I'm going to make a DIY ring light 
Uh, that'll be a, a different tutorial, uh, probably after my, my wedding series or maybe during my wedding series, which will be next. Um, because there are lots of people out there now doing DIY weddings. I'm one of them. And I just have a lot of neat ideas. People have told me, wow, that's really, really a good idea. You ought to share that. And now that I'm doing YouTube, I say, well, you know what? Now I can share it. And I'm almost to the last loop. And after this, things are going to move a whole lot faster. But I can tell you, making a wreath, because it takes so much time, it really is a labor of love because you have to be very precise in how you're laying things out. So you may not be able to do this in a seated position. You may have to stand while you do it. Um, but this one worked out that I was able to, to stay seated while doing this. But when I put my embellishments on, I'll be standing up. Okay, so I have come to the last... Okay, so I have come to the last piece... <clears throat> so what I'm going to end up doing is going ahead and leaving about this much of ribbon out. So I measure that from my fingertips in the, to my elbow. And I think I am going to give it a dovetail. So that's one, and then I think for the rest of the fabric that I have left from my fingertips to my elbow, fingertips to elbow, so that about half of that will do the same thing. So we'll end up having three flags. Okay. <clears throat> if you do happen to work with, <clears throat> if you do happen to work with one that has lots of glitter fallout like this one, and it is small glitter, and you have wood floors, it will be very slippery. Please be careful when you get up. I don't know if you noticed that I stumbled a little bit there. Okay. So, looking at the wreath, I have one flag here. Which you could, if you wanted to, you could have it flow down the center, but I actually like it up. And then I'll do curly cues on that. But I think I'm going to place the second one here, and then I'll place the third one here. So I'm just going to connect this here. And then this one. I said I would connect it here. And next I'm going to be putting my flowers on. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and mash the outside down. And then I'm going to start working from the inside and putting in a few embellishments. And the way I want to do the embellishments, I have little berries, which a couple of them fell. So I have five sets of berries and I have five sets of flowers. Okay. So what I'm going to do is have some of the berries intertwine throughout and then have the flowers intertwine throughout. The flowers, I've already made them in like little bouquets which I showed how to do that in video number two when I made the column sprays. So I already have those sitting to the side, but the berries, I've left those long. And the reason that I've left those long is because I'm gonna actually put the berries throughout and I'm not gonna connect them on to the Chanel stems. I'm actually gonna feed them down into the frame and I'm going to bend them around the frame in the back. You can use zip ties to connect it, you can use the Chanel stems to connect it, but I just like the look of it because you can use this wire. 
and it also gives it a little bit of movement besides movement and texture which I really enjoy so I'm going to place this here and you just play with it for how you like your design to look And with the, this is going to go towards the center here, and it's going to lay across this one. Just like that. You seem to up oh, yeah, it fell. I was gonna say I know I had another one. Uh, right now it doesn't seem like that third berry, that uh, fifth berry is necessary. So what I also want to do is I want to add some leaves to this. So I have some garlands that are from the Dollar Tree that are autumn. And I'm going to lay these in between with the chenille stems and secure those down. And I'm starting on the outside. And I'm going to use two garlands. And you can see that this garland ends here. It doesn't go all the way around. But that's okay because we can pick up from there. And then with the Chanel that's here, I'm going to actually run it through those loops in the garland and secure it so that they're connected. And this garland is now connected here. So now I'm going to start working towards the center. That's the hubby going back inside the house with the dog. All right. And now that is connected. And look how everything's filling out. It's getting harder and harder to see that metal frame inside and that's what you want. So now we can beautify it with flowers. Now I'm gonna use hot glue. Be very careful while using the glue. So I'm gonna place one here. I've only got five. So gotta be real careful and precise where I place it. And I am not going to be stingy with this hot glue at all uh, because you can't do, you want it to be secure. It's gonna be hanging against gravity. So we definitely need it to be secure. And I like to make sure that I'm putting them where the Chanel stems are. I'm going to put another glue stick in because it goes very, very quickly.
And be careful not to burn yourself. And I think I want the last one here. And I'm going to fluff this up, and y'all are going to see the final project. Let me unplug this, because that's the safest thing to do. I see with the other ribbons that I have not put my dovetails on, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, and we're going to go ahead and fluff this out. You're gonna see just how beautiful this wreath is, how full and gorgeous it is. And I know some of you may have been thinking, you know that wreath that she had, the framework was so tiny from the Dollar Tree, but it's not the actual framework that's gonna make the wreath. It's how big, how wide, how thick, how long your ribbons actually are. Because that's what's gonna make the fullness of your, your wreath. It's all about the ribbons that are used. How big you make your poofs, that has a little bit of a determination in it as well. It just really depends mostly on the software that you use in your wreath as to how big it is. Not the hard framework. And make sure we puff up all of the loops Separate all of the ribbons, making sure that the garlands work well. Look at that. Please be careful if you use ribbon that has fallout. And look at this final reveal of this beautiful autumn wreath. Isn't that gorgeous? Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe, please share, and please like. If you have any comments, any ideas that you want me to bring to you, please put it in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.